Next up, the Book of Lamentations. As a result of Judah's continued and unrepentant idolatry, God allowed the Babylonians to besiege, plunder, burn, and destroy the city of Jerusalem. Solomon's temple, which stood for approximately 400 years, was burnt to the ground. The prophet Jeremiah, an eyewitness to these events, wrote the Book of Lamentations as a lament for what occurred to Judah and Jerusalem. It was likely written between 586 and 575 BC, during or soon after Jerusalem's fall. The book has only five chapters, each representing a separate poem. In the original Hebrew, the verses are acrostic, each verse starting with a succeeding letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Lamentations makes it clear that sin and rebellion were the causes of God's wrath being poured out. Lamenting is appropriate in a time of distress, but it should quickly give way to contrition and repentance. Verse 1. How lonely sits the city that was full of people. She has become like a widow who was once great among the nations. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a forced laborer. She weeps bitterly in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. She has none to comfort her among all her lovers. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile under affliction and under harsh servitude. She dwells among the nations, but she has found no rest. All her pursuers have overtaken her in the midst of distress. The roads of Zion are in mourning because no one comes to the appointed feasts. All her gates are desolate, her priests are groaning, her virgins are afflicted, and she herself is bitter. Her adversaries have become her masters, her enemies prosper, for the Lord has caused her grief because of the multitude of her transgressions. Her little ones have gone away as captives before the adversary. All her majesty has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes have become like deer that have found no pasture, and they have fled without strength before the pursuer. In the days of her affliction and homelessness, Jerusalem remembers all her precious things that were from the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the adversary and no one helped her. The adversary saw her, they mocked at her ruin. Jerusalem sinned greatly. Therefore, she has become an unclean thing. All who honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Even she herself groans and turns away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She did not consider her future. Therefore, she has fallen astonishingly. She has no comforter. See, O Lord, my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself. Pause. Jerusalem committed atrocious sins against God by whoring herself out to other gods and pagan practices. Verse 10. The adversary has stretched out his hand over all her precious things, for she has seen the nations enter her sanctuary the ones whom you commanded that they should never enter into your congregation. All her people groan, seeking bread. They have given their precious things for food to restore their lives themselves. See, O Lord, and look, for I am despised. Is it nothing to all you who pass this way? Look and see if there is any pain like my pain, which was severely dealt out to me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. From on high, he sent fire into my bones, and it prevailed over them. He has spread a net for my feet. He has turned me back. He has made me desolate, faint, all day long. Pause. God's judgment was severe and intense, and was for the purpose of bringing repentance. Verse 14. The yoke of my transgressions is bound. By his hand, they are knit together. They have come upon my neck. He has made my strength fail. The Lord has given me into the hands of those against whom I am not able to stand. The Lord has rejected all my strong men in my midst. He has called an appointed time against me to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden, as in a winepress, the virgin daughter of Judah. For these things I weep, my eyes run down with water, because far from me is a comforter, one who restores my soul. My children are desolate, because the enemy has prevailed." Zion stretches out her hands. There is no one to comfort her. The Lord has commanded concerning Jacob that the ones round about him should be his adversaries. Jerusalem has become an unclean thing among them. 
The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his command. Hear now, all peoples, and behold my pain. My virgins and my young men have gone into captivity. I called to my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and my elders perished in the city while they sought food to restore their strength themselves. Pause. Jerusalem's lovers only brought upon pain and hardship. Verse 20. See, O Lord, for I am in distress. My spirit is greatly troubled. My heart is overturned within me, for I have been very rebellious. In the street, the sword slays. In the house, it is like death. They have heard that I groan. There is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my calamity. They are glad that you have done it. Oh, that you would bring the day which you have proclaimed, that they may become like me. Let all their wickedness come before you and deal with them as you have dealt with me for all my transgressions. For my groans are many and my heart is faint. Well, as we know, it's unfortunate that sometimes in life, God has to uh, cause suffering or hardship for a person or a group of people before they do some self-examination, um, feel senses of true contrition that leads them to faith and repentance. But as we know, for the case of eternity and the glory of God, it is very important. All right. Our saintly snippet is from a book called Brave Dad by uh, Pastor John MacArthur. And I uh, thought it was uh, a good reminder for all of us dads out there. The question being asked by many today are these. Where are the strong husbands? Where are the loyal, loving, leading husbands and fathers? Where are the men who are willing to stand as the backbone, the solid framework or structure on which you can build a marriage and a family, and in turn, a society? Too many men today live in worlds completely isolated from their families. Outside the home, they are aggressive doers and problem solvers who come up with all sorts of innovative ways to make money and obtain promotions, prestige, and respect from the people in their outside world. Yet in the home, for the most part, they are passive, indifferent, and irresponsible. Though they may be present in the home, they are not actively engaged in the everyday dynamics of family life. Let's remember that, dads. All right, let's pray for the day. Thank you, God, for the wisdom and insight you give us to see beyond our temporal circumstances to your eternal purposes. May we live today with that perspective in mind. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving us empty-handed. You have provided us the truth of your word to help navigate us through this life. Thank you that we can bring anything and everything to the foot of the cross and make all of our requests known to you. Thank you that even though there may be trouble in this world, you have overcome the world. We cannot survive the storms of life without your peace. And in you, we are the victors over the enemy who attempts to destroy it. We ask that you cover us in your peace today. We know that even if our eyes can't see our circumstances changing, that you see it and you are in control. Thank you that your peace is not only our guard, but our guide protecting us. In Jesus' name, we lift up these prayers. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Hope to see you tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful day. Stay close to the Lord. He will carry you on. God bless you and take care.